Welcome everybody to Got A Lot On Our Minds, episode 11. We're here, we're live, we're recording. This is previously recorded. We are not live. My name is Stevie B, my co-host. What's going on? I'm Kells. You can find me at Kells55 or Iconic Visions. As a business again. Yes, 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 yes. Today we have a very special guest. He is a fucking director. He is a writer. He is just a man of many hats. And just we'll let him do an intro. Actually, no, I'm, I'm going to name him. His name is Daniel Leahy. And don't forget the E. All right, I just wanted to give it a minute. I wanted to give it an extra minute. I wasn't sure because uh, I didn't want to. It was... Believe it or not, it's very hard not to interrupt with any way, shape, or form. Because I'm so used to, like, with Dixon's podcast when I'm on that, just giving him a hard time. I'm like, nope, nope, gotta let him do their thing. Uh, yeah, you guys can uh, follow me at uh, Proven Noble 100, uh, my production company, GameSaw. You can follow them at, uh, at GameSaw Productions. Um, I, I always love hearing when people, like, throw me, like, different hats on me because they make me sound more professional than I feel. And I, I don't know, maybe that's just, maybe because I'm like, I don't know, I, I guess I'm making moves right now, so maybe that's true. Maybe 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 it's worth, I don't know, it's like, I, I'm curious because I, I always hear that people in the industry, it's like, they never they never feel professional, that they, even though they are. So I don't know, maybe that's maybe that's just the thing. No, I, I, no I, I, I understand that. Um, I think it's like a humbling thing when you're like kind of uh, just like, I don't know, you, sometimes you got to be your own like cheerleader in a sense but then you're also like trying to be humble but uh, um what why are you laughing you fuck it's just a, nothing uh it's fine you know you gotta have i mean you gotta have your the confidence in yourself is what i mean kind of thing you know you, you gotta believe in yourself before other people but then there's sometimes when like you won't know who's like kind of rooting you on in a sense but um i mean from what i've always seen is like as a director you, you always have a clear um clear thought in mind you know you plan things out very professionally and and you know oh, for me you, specifically yeah or? you know what you want and and i think that's something that uh successful people have so yeah, i think be- i think it's definitely gonna show in my i mean it's, it has shown in work and it will show in the future too yeah be, be aware steve a lot of this podcast is uh is gonna be me complimenting your co-host because <laughs> of how how much we've we've worked together over over these past four years Oh, yeah. he's, he's 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 essentially just become my rock and he chris knows this for a fact i will i will always hit chris because he's he's like my go-to dp he's my go-to dp for anything because he's just a god with a camera so i will always i will i even just hit him up the other day about uh, a short film that i actually want him to come up to to buffalo and uh shoot with me because i'm living uh, is for the audience i'm living I, I originally lived in the same area with these guys i just recently moved up to buffalo so i uh i want him to come up him and uh other uh, friend of the shows, uh, Alex Haynes. I want him, the, bo- the both of them, to come up and give me a hand with a like a five minute. I'd say it's probably five minute, like short film. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because because like I could I could reach out to people here in the city, but I haven't worked with these guys yet. Chris, at least when I call Chris, it's like I know he's gonna not only give me like the best looking visuals I can get, but he's also gonna tell he's also gonna tell me what what we should do, and he's gonna it's just gonna be a great collab on that. And that's that's what I like about working with the man. I'm glad he's your rock because he's my ulcer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get the other fucking end of this guy. Uh, take you long to to come up with that one? You just... No, it was the, it would instantly <laughs> popped in my head. <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad I can uh, have such different perspectives. It's, well, you gotta be people. a yin. You gotta be the yin and the yang, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're you're the yin to me, and you're his yang. I mean, yeah. when you when you know a guy for so long, you gotta you gotta mess with them, you know. Oh, I can okay. imagine. Yeah, Dan, as far as like, uh, you know, where people like whatever they name you and shout you out and the kind of stuff like in a friend set, if from what I've seen and I don't have much experience, but and like when you're around your friends, you could just be like, you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, like I am like if you are directing a uh, like a movie or a short film and you'd be like, yeah, I'm just working on this thing. But as far as like in a professional setting, people you don't know, like any hats they give you to wear, fucking wear them, dude, because there's people out there. They're like. Um, they're like, what's your job? And if they tell you like in blatant terms, they're like, well, what I do is I just, I, I assign this person to this role and I just, I just, I just give people roles to do. But, and then they'll be like, um, I'm the executive administrator. That's what I do. I run administration and they make it sound like their job is this big fucking deal when it's really not. So wear your hats, wear them proud. Like, you know, yeah, I get that completely. Yeah. And 
I looked up, I was like updating my resume and shit. And I looked up the way other people like had the similar job that I had and what they called their like job duties or tasks. And the way they named them versus what I know they actually are. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, you just like fucking fabricated the shit out of this. Like your job, like our, our job is not that extensive, but Mm -hmm. on paper, they blow it out to be like this big, they seem like they're bigger than they are. So yeah, I will, I will say one thing, um, as far as hats goes, one thing I'm actually really happy to add to my, my ever growing hat collection is, uh, I've recently just been getting a little bit more work as a boom operator, which, Mm. so, I mean, obviously I, I, Steve, I know you're, you're a sound guy, especially with running a podcast like this. You're, you're very much a sound guy. So I think you'd probably appreciate all this. Uh, but, uh, with, I, I got a job recently. Well, one of the jo- I I, kn- I know a guy and he got me a job on his feature that he was working on called Wild Orchids. Uh, very good film. They're they're kind of in a production hiatus right now, but it was a very good film. I won't talk too much about it because I don't. It's not my production to talk mm. about. But uh, uh, I was originally working PA on that, and then they actually upgraded me to because they needed because uh, they knew I had all the sound equipment um, between my Premix Three sound recorder, which is what I'm recording on right now. Uh, and obviously my boom gear that I have picked up over the years. So I, um, they brought me onto that and I think I, cause it was, a, it was essentially a two week shoot cause it was like a 70 page script. So, uh, they went ahead and they brought like first week I was just PA second week I got brought on to be the, the boom operator. And, uh, I was incredibly, incredibly nervous cause I had never, I never shot, uh, like I've never worked. I've, the only thing boom wise I've done is just a lot of my own stuff. So mm-hmm. I've never haven't had to work boom for anything like high level production, and we're working in a lot of different uh, settings around the city. Like one of which being downtown, and you got the train running through downtown all the time. You say it's and pretty noisy, right? Yeah, it'd be very noisy. So one yeah. of the things I had to I had to worry about was uh, was that. But the, the other thing, which I I don't think I would have cared so much if I was like the other sound guy, because the other guy who was there, he's like, not only does he have like a sound recorder, uh, which is a much he had a much bigger sound recorder uh, with a lot more fucking gizmos attached to it but he also had uh he also had lav mics and Mm. i don't have my own lav mics Mm -hmm. so at least at least it's like okay well with for him it's like well if the boom mic didn't get got like fucked up at least they have like the lav mics resort back to and i'm like yeah it's it's either the boom or nothing like Mm -hmm. i'm still talking to the director right now i'm like hey by any chance did you like because he's like doing rough edits of the film right now and he's i'm like hey by any chance did you like get to the stuff that i shot with you and he keeps going no not yet i'm still through the other stuff i'm like could you like please just at some point get to that and like tell me everything's okay because that's going to take a huge load off of my mind. Mm. I need to be able to sleep at night. Yeah. Like legit. I just, I keep expecting to like tech, like text him one day. He's like, He's like, dude, I'm not gonna lie, you like fucked me because the audio sounds nothing. terrible, and I'll give you like, ah, oh, no, <laughs> like it's just that's my that's my fucking fear yeah. all the time now with this. So, but I mean, like, I I I think like from what I said, I think it, from what I heard on uh, the task game, I think it came out all right. But you know, no, I I hear you on that because every time I do this podcast, I'm like, I'm definitely not recording. That's <laughs> <laughs> the that's I think the fear. I I even just like before I even started this up, like I was just making sure for the half an hour before we started that everything was functional and working properly on this. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I'm trying to be so perfect that I just fuck up something. Well, that's, that's like the major fears. Like you're trying to get all the other things in place. You know what I mean? Like, all right, make sure the boom's on the shot, make sure I'm in place, make sure it's pointed right. All the cables are connected, blah, blah, blah. All right. Everything's good. And everything's kind of like moving around you so quick. And then like, are you good? Yeah, yeah I'm good. I'm good. And then like, all right, and action. And then you're like, fuck, I didn't hit record. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, that's like <laughs> oh, the worst yeah. fear, you know? I, I think I did that. Uh, I think I'm better with that now. I, I think I did that the first couple times when I started using this recorder. But I, the thing I like about it, it's like, it's it's definitely better than like a Tascam, the Premix 3. Because I think it, 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 I think with, I think we can all say, because we've all used Tascams, the mm-hmm. most annoying thing about them has to be the standby setting. Mm-hmm. And uh, for every, for, every beginner filmmaker out there who's listening to this, I think everybody's going to have that problem for like the first year in film school where they don't know whether the task cam is recording or not. It happens <laughs> to everybody, at least with the yeah. pre-mix. The thing I love about it, it's, it's very plain and simple. There's a stop button and there's a record button mm-hmm. and both are lit two very different colors. <laughs> so yeah, you never have, yeah, you never have that issue. And even when you're listening with the headphones, it legitimately just makes a sound when it stops recording. So mm-hmm. that's a, it's, it's a much simpler system and, uh, and even got like an led touch screen attached to it too, which makes checking levels even better but I, th- that's just me hyping up this thing i fucking love this thing this is like one of the best purchases i ever made that's good nah, man. i'm, I'm in the, i love my 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 equipment like you said giz 
gadgets and gizmos and stuff. I, I, I love all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you're so. a sound guy, so yeah. that's why I can imagine. That's why I wanted to bring this up to you. I'm like, you'd probably appreciate this. No, I do, yeah. What would you call it? The Premix 5, you called it? No, it was a, it was a Premix 3. There's two Premix There's two 3. Premixes. It's by Sound Devices. It's a, it's a Premix 3. Uh, the only other one they have is a Premix 6, and that's usually just from the uh, aux, how many aux ports it has in it. So mm. mine has three. The 6 obviously has six in it. Uh, it's definitely worth the investment. I'm, I'm sure you do. You have, do you have a soundboard that you run everything off of, or, or for here, just... no. For this, no. I, I just do it all internally. I wish I had a soundboard. I actually hit up Dixon um, oh, once I saw me... his setup, and I was like, "Yo, let me know what you're running off of." Like it, but yeah, because it's... I need like a, if I were to get one, you know, not one, maybe like an eight track. You know, I don't need I don't need that many tracks, and half of them now you can like, there's like track row A, row B. So you used to have eight faders, but you could still have sixteen tracks. You just got to make sure you're in the right row type of stuff but yeah no I, I love all that kind of stuff yeah it's definitely worth the i'd say it's definitely worth the investment especially like if you guys ever start like uh doing uh like in-person podcasts at all like mm. an in-person talking uh, talking with this this is definitely a great thing to have for that because like you can this has multi-track recording on it as well so that also uh that also helps for that uh, I, I have to actually get it turned for, so for this upcoming project, I'm doing this documentary. Um, I need to, I need to actually reset it back to, uh, to the multi-track setting because while me and Chris were shooting, um, my pilot, uh, 45 minute pilot grief, I had turned off the multi-track recording because I'd have like, I'd have about like, for some reason, like, even though it's a three track thing, I'd have like six tracks that come through and two of them would have sound on it. And I'd have about like four dead air tracks while I'm trying to edit this, this, this piece out. And I'm like, all right, this is just, I can't deal with this anymore. I have to, I have to do something about it. So I turned right. it off and now I need, now I need them again. And I don't know how the, how the hell I turned it off to begin with. So I have absolutely no idea how to turn it back on. So that's <laughs> like, that's going to be the rest of my day after Go this. Cause Google I have it. to, cause I have a, uh, I've been Googling it. No one gives me a straight answer about it. Everyone's Factory like, reset. No, well, maybe, maybe honestly, but like, turn all it, these did people, you try turning it off and turning it back on? You know, I, I, I haven't, I kind of just left it on <laughs> with the power pack plugged into, plugged into the wall. That's the other thing about this thing too. It, it eats, it eat, eats up so much battery life. I had to buy, I had to buy a power pack. Mm -hmm. um that has 24 which actually this is great it's the power pack itself is supposed to be able to run for 24 hours yeah uh plugged into this it could make the it could make the sound device run for about 12 hours which is great because that's about the entire set time anyway mm -hmm. so like time on set you would need for something like this so you know that's that's that, that's that's the full setup on that that's pretty that's pretty dope i mean yeah i, I know that the battery life is really tough but um do you remember when we were shooting grief by the way how um before i got the power pack how we were running how we were running there were like device? 18 fucking batteries like every five minutes yeah yeah it's... we were uh we uh we had a day uh this was actually one of the days you weren't there for it's the day we were shooting the scene with alex haynes and uh, okay. taylor Dillon. okay um and uh my my other uh my friend who i brought in to help with sound chris who was not a sound guy by the way i think i educated him uh, Chris O'Connor, not Chris mm -hmm. Kelly. Okay. I, I think I educated him on how to be a sound guy because I pretty much now because he's he's used this for that entire shoot. I think he's like essentially qualified to run my audio equipment now, even though like he's nowhere near this field. But um, we were shooting that day, and before I had the the we were out we were outside the cafe in uh, Montgomery. Uh, what was it? I think Iron Cafe, mm -hmm. and uh, we're sh we're shooting, and uh, we get through like a quarter of the scene. And we, by the time we get through a quarter of the scene, we've gone through about all, like, I'm going to say eight to ten batteries we have. Mm. And we're like, well, what do we do? It's like, all right, there's a store right down the street. We have to, like, buy every single battery they have. I'm sure we bought about, like, we thought about, like, three packs worth of AA batteries. And we went through all of them for the rest of that shoot. Jeez, yeah, which... it's, it's tough when something runs through battery like that. That's like the black magic. It goes pretty quick. I'm like shooting and it's like 20 minutes later, I see the batteries on red and I'm like, all right. So I also had to get like, when I bought it originally, it came with, um, the, uh, yeah. Right. It came with a power pack too. I got like a bundle. Um, so then I have like also like four extra Canon batteries just in case, like I need to do stuff handheld and things like that. Um, but I mean, speaking of grief, like what, I mean, this might be, um, sidebar. Yeah. Wh what Dan, what is sidebar? Yeah uh explain grief briefly yes. explain what grief was and where yes. people can find it and go yes. watch it so they can yes. check out your stuff 
All right. So yeah. So grief. Uh, this was a. Um, I I wrote I wrote back in like 2016 with a with a buddy of mine, Alex Clee. I had well, I I had this premise in my mind, and I pitched it to him because it seemed like it would be something his level of writing. It was a. Uh, it was a, it was it was essentially supposed. To, well, it was originally it was supposed to be a feature that we decided to expand because of a lot of story ideas we wanted to put in. We expanded into the idea of it being like a five part limited series. And we, we did this, we shot the first chapter in the hopes of possibly at some point marketing it off to get some sort of funding for it eventually. But it's, uh, it's the story about a former police officer who, after losing his son, uh, copes with the loss by becoming a, uh, killer for hire, becoming a contract hitman. Ooh. Uh, so yeah, we had, uh, this was a, this was a production, this was a long running production. It took uh, mm-hmm. it, t- it took like several years to actually get it off the ground mm-hmm. and so much rescheduling. Chris is, Chris was there for all of it. He was there for all of it since like the very beginning. And I was very happy that he stuck through it with me. This is again, him being my rock. I don't think, I don't think it, we would have even gotten chapter one done if he wasn't on board with it and dedicated so much time, uh, to that shoot. Uh, to me, for me as a, as a director, I, I watch it and I'm like, I, I can see, uh, I can see the flaws uh in it which is but 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 the thing i'll say is like i'm very proud of what oh, yeah. we managed to accomplish it's like this is what i'm saying like I, i'm like i know the problems with it but as far as the problems are concerned i think it's a great piece i think it's an entertaining piece to to watch if you guys want to go to my channel uh game saw uh it's up there for everyone to see uh hopefully game saw is I, one word right game yep, saw you just type because okay. there's there's a couple other game saw uh channels out there um uh, we're we're probably the big the biggest one out of all of them though uh it's because it's it is one word. We wrote Game Saw Productions is like one word on it. Uh, eventually, I think I might get the LLC to it. I've talked. Mm-hmm. I've actually I had a whole conversation recently about my uh, with my father about uh, getting an LLC made uh, solely because of the fact for like tax write offs. Mm-hmm. Uh, now that I'm living in Buffalo. So what I will say is, I mean, yes, it took a long time to to come up with to fin- finalize shoot everything, um, but it's also like a there's going to be flaws even even if you shoot it like back to back you know nothing's ever perfect you see game of thrones they had coffee cups in it you yeah know? oh so, don't get me wrong um, like i'm not uh i mean that's just that's just me like that's like what I, I, i'll oh, do no, yeah. I'll, I'll undercut it a little that, bit so that's you being your own worst critic and i do the same yeah. thing but the whole um, final season of game of thrones is a flaw yeah okay yeah. Fuck <laughs> out of here. i'm not gonna <laughs> go into true. i'm not gonna go into that but yes um so what i'll say is the resiliency of still like you like i know what you went through to get there and i know like the the struggles the conflicts the ups and downs so to keep on doing that is a testament to like how much you love your craft and and kind of like you know just just putting the effort into so i mean i think if you can do this off of that and like keep that in mind where like you had that that long thing but you still came out with like a I think it's like what forty five minutes or something like that to an hour. Yeah, which which I loved. I love the fact because um, we can we easily can like market that off as like a feature. Exactly. No, I uh, mean even if you, I mean I know it didn't make circuits for like film festivals and stuff, but just to have that in your pocket is still like an accomplishment in my in yeah, my book. Well, I've I've honestly I've said this because I've I've reached a point now where I'm I'm essentially planning out like I've I've been in the process of planning out the next five years and where I want my life to go from That's here cool. I'm in the process of like making the moves to make that happen and I, I've said like I'm like I I love what we did for grief and like if I could uh the one the one thing I like I don't want to drop the project yet because one thing one thing I've always said is uh and it's the th- reason why I make grief it's the reason why I make a lot of my productions is I I never want to be that guy. Because I've known so many people who are like this. I love them, but there's so many people I know who are like this where uh, I I don't want to be that person who, like, just says something and then just keeps talking about it, but then never... I don't want to be somebody who doesn't do what he's gonna what he says he's going to do. That's because, tough, yeah. Because the, the moment I say... Like, I always set my sights out regardless of when it happens. I never say something I'm never not going to do. If I say I'm going to do a project, I'm you can rest assured whether it be, n- like, next week or uh several years from now it, it's eventually going to get made and that was like the same thing with grief like i remember I, I like i even said at the at the release of the film that um you know this was like you know my biggest thing was like not being like you know after all the talk i did with it and all the people who dedicated time to it i'm like this was gonna get made regardless of quality because i wanted you know i i would rather put something out and have it be shit and say that i did it than 
uh, just keeps talking about it and then never having anything happen because you people will look at that then and be like people look at me and it's like well what's his word really worth if he can't mm-hmm. even do this thing he said all of his time doing so plus it's a stepping stone there's a saying that like uh if you spend all your time talking about what you're gonna do you're never gonna do it mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. exactly yeah, that's I mean. that's exactly that's exactly true so the um with with me it's uh you know, I, I I wanted to make sure that you know I, I did the project, and the thing that I've I've realized after doing chapter one, because it, it was actually really funny. So many people came to me after chapter one got released, and they were like, "Yo, when's chapter two? Like both, yeah. uh, cr- both people who just like were a part of the film and people who like watched it, they're like, "Yo, when do we do? When, when's chapter two coming out? When are we starting chapter two? And I'm like, I don't really know if we are because at this point to make chapter two, like it took so long to get chapter one made. Cha- making chapter two would be it it would be fi- it wouldn't be financially sound mm-hmm. like to to make it there wouldn't like i wouldn't be able to make it unless there was some sort of gain to get out of that cuz i have to i i have reached a point now where i have to move on with my life back then when i made it i wasn't financially like worrying about much now i have yeah. to worry about finances mm-hmm. so i have to yeah. consider things that are going to be financially beneficial to me yeah um but se- in in light of that what i think it uh what what i think what i think for going forward in the future is like if i reach a point where i'm you know, successful enough where I can come back and I can make this project as a pitch and then show the yeah. original first chapter off to somebody and be like, yeah, this is like a proof of concept. Mm-hmm. And they could uh, mm-hmm. and have people be like, yeah, yeah, let's throw some money at this and get in, like, just tell them what the rest of the four chapters and the whole story is going to be. Dude, that's not even a proof of concept. That's like an actual film. Like, you, yeah. you have well, the... Well, t- to me, well, it's a proof of concept because it's only one chapter out of five, so... But the other thing being Still. is I would I, I would honestly I what I would probably end up doing is uh, I'd, I'd probably just remake chapter one, but with on, on an actual budget, because mm-hmm. that was like a that was that was made for almost nothing. I think the only budget we had was like a thousand dollars and that was the thousand dollars I dropped on extra equipment mm-hmm. uh, that I personally own. But yeah, with uh with with that, it's you know, I, I'd, I'd remake chapter one and I'd do it with uh with an actual budget, but I'd also make it uh. I I make it an effort to bring back everybody who was a mm-hmm. part of that. Maybe not in like leading roles or leading crew positions, but just in some way, shape, or form to kind of be both not both as nods to the original as well as just to you know get like have everybody like just be like yeah this is like I'd want to make it professionally and I want you guys to to it's thank you guys for well yeah I said <laughs> but I'd also want you guys to be like just to say thank you for coming and doing the first version of it. I'd want you to come on and do some sort of like role with the new version of it but that's is, that's a that's years down the line when i have leverage in my life when i when i get the financial leverage. financial stability well i was yeah. gonna say i know that i know you can get grants for like mu- uh, i know like uh our musicians and artists can get grants to make music it might be worth looking into to see if you could get a grant to do that um i don't know what you what parameters you'd have to you know have checked to make sure that it fills it but i mean if you're ever bored, just you know, try looking into it. Maybe you could qualify for that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's free money. The, you don't got to pay that back. Yeah, yeah. I'm, like I said, though, I'm like a lot of it's just you know, once I'm once I'm more stable, then yeah. I'll start considering personal projects. Like right now, everything I'm doing is just to either you know get my name out there or just to make a paycheck at this mm-hmm. point in my life. Yeah, bring Chris on as an intern. Right? Fuck you, Steve. Make him your coffee, bitch. Yeah. The um. Is would you say that like grief is one of the things you're most proud of, or is there other things that you like kind of? Um, de- grief is on the list of most proud of things. I'd say the two most the the, the two things in my personal like I, I've done I've done a, I think I've done de- a good amount of stuff. Yeah, yeah as yeah. far as as far as personal projects go, there's like two that I think I'm most pr- well. Th- okay, there's a couple. Okay, I, go I, on. I, if I was to go, grief is probably one of the more recent ones I'm most proud of. I'm also proud, I'm very much proud, actually, of um, back in, I'm going to say 2015, 2016. Um, no, no, it actually was later than that. I was like, it had to be 2018. Mm-hmm. Uh, I put out a um, short film based off the Stephen King property, Strawberry Spring. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm very proud of that short film because I, I did so much research going into that one, too. I remember reading the story back when we all went to Auk, mm-hmm. uh, SUNY Orange, and I read the short story for Strawberry Spring, and uh, I thought it was such a i thought it was like I, it really hooked me that story that was such an amazing piece and i came to it came to ub up here in buffalo university of buffalo and i had to do a short i had to do a short film for my advanced uh video, video production course and i was like all right well what do i um 
yeah, I had a bunch of ideas running through my head and eventually I was like, oh, let me just do this. This is like being here on this campus is like the perfect backdrop since it already happens at a school anyway. So uh, I made that. Uh, it's not without its flaws like any of my productions, but um, yeah. it I, I was proud of it and it actually won me a scholarship award. So that was I think that's something to be proud of because like I can officially say that's like my first ever award winning piece nice uh so it, it won me a nice scholarship award which i used that money to actually get some stuff for grief so that's that helped a lot uh and then uh the other thing i think at this point in my life i'm most proud of is my current web series demolition squad i was, I was uh, hoping you would go there yeah i had a feeling that's where you wanted me to go with it too that's that's gotta was, be like i was just throwing it up and i was hoping no, I know, you were gonna slam it down so well that's those are probably like the three thing i'm things i'm like most proud of in my life right now that i personally made because um i know i know you at least with you chris i don't know about you steve i know chris is a very big fan of the show uh he's a very big fan of the production i've watched a, of um demolition squad yeah i've watched a couple episodes of it yeah we've got oh, that's, uh that's funny because that's what's out right now <laughs> yeah, we, we're actually we're in the process of getting the we're we're like so cl we're like on the last stages of episode three right now, which Perfect. is the biggest episode we've done. It's it's a it's again, I think the official runtime on it's going to be 20 minutes long nice. or just again, slightly um, over 20 minutes for people who haven't seen it. Explain what it is and where they can find it. So so Demolition Squad is a machinima series. Uh, I'm a. I'm a very big fan, or I was a very big fan of Red versus Blue. I haven't followed the show as of late. I, I was a mm -hmm. uh, Rooster Teeth was the company that really got me into filmmaking, because uh, I remember looking at those guys when I was a uh, was out when I was in middle school, and I was like, oh my god, these guys can like, like most people who I think who got on the internet uh, were just like, you know, these guys like, you know, they they're just a group of friends and they just made something like this. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So that was like, they were a big inspiration to me, and. Uh, Chris, you might find this very interesting being a fan of the show. Uh, we actually, me and my uh, good friend Larry Pollack, mm -hmm. uh, co-creator of the show, we created the show back when we were in high school. The yeah, show is approximately the, sh the, sh the show is approximately I got I got I think like maybe like ten years old at this point. Uh, we because we came up with this concept back in like 2010, 2011. Because me and him, like our whole friendship, got based around Rooster Teeth and Red versus Blue. Because we we were uh, freshmen. And we kind of knew each other, but we didn't know each other that well. And we ended up being like the same lunch period. And it was just the two of us. Like no one else in our friend group was in there. So the two of us would like sit down at lunch. And then we started like talking about like red versus blue. And we started going into, you know, we start, we start going into it. And then, uh, and then eventually we're like, yo, like what if, what if we did something like that? Mm -hmm. Uh, so a lot of it then was like, we started like just during freshman year, started like planning out this entire like series uh, and with all these different characters and cause we, we dissected the show is what we ended up doing. We, we dissected red versus blue and we went, all right, what's, uh, what's like, what's, what makes this good? And it's like, how can we do it our, on our own? And I was, I'm very proud of that because that's something I did as a kid and here it is now. And it's been making decent waves online. And it's still, it's still, I've got an ever growing fan base. And that's like, I think the thing that means the most to me is the fact that we have like a lot of just positive comments that come back to this. And we get, and I think the best one I hear is, is uh, people when they say it's like, this is the new red versus blue. And to me, it's like, that means a lot because that show meant a lot to me. And the fact that people feel like it's in the same class as an amazing show like that was like, it, it, it meant so much to me when I started reading these comments and I'm absolutely loving the fan base we're building to this show. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing to be compared to be compared to, I'm sorry, because like, Red versus blue, like you said, was kind of like more in the earlier stages of like the internet, kind of mm -hmm. like because me, like me and Chris watched Red versus Blue too. Oh my God, we quoted and, it so like, much. It's one of those things, like in like that internet lo like lore, like you know, like you talk to like even people like you know me and Chris are thirty and Dan, you're a little younger than us, but like oh yeah, you bring it up and like we still all remember it. You know yeah. what I mean? So to be compared to that is is good. That's that's good company to keep. You know? Yeah, we'll throw yeah. In, we'll throw like little quotes here and there every now and then, but like yeah, when when it was like in the peak of when it was coming out, we were like just so excited for it. We would just like we would yeah, it would I'll, it would make us die to like. to to throw to throw my fandom of the show at you guys a little bit. I I own every season of that show on DVD, including the uh the special like award ceremony DVD cut that they did, um where it was like they were just like it was just kind of like a look back at the first eight seasons of the show, and they did like a little machinima like red carpet <clears> type like fun thing for it put it on a dvd uh which i found one day when i was at shop right and i was like oh my god i've never even heard of this and i bought it immediately but um but yeah i own all 
I'm gonna say I own I own I own the first thirteen seasons because to me that's where the show was at its stride and uh, no offense to the company, but like after that I was just kind of like uh, I feel like it's kind of run its course a little mm-hmm. bit. Like it, I just I didn't like I hated season fourteen and the other seasons I watched after that were kind of meh. So, uh, but yeah, so with the first thirteen seasons and I also own uh, the encyclopedia they put out for red versus blue which which was also like a which was a thing that helped us like with crafting the show uh mm-hmm. demolition squad was a thing like i i dissected that and it was part of my dissecting process which was like all right you know like this this and um but the thing i uh, to to tell the difference is like we're inspired by red versus blue but in no way do we try to copy it like yeah. that, i think that's right, that was right. that yeah, was yeah. such a that was such an important thing that me and larry talked about early on was like we we have to do our own thing. Like we we looked at formulas that they did, and we just tried to adapt the formula in our own way. Like we're like like uh obviously like two of our characters like uh, people could compare them to is like Oliver and Charlie versus like Griff and Simmons, just like the the friend dynamic mm-hmm. that you see. Which I think that's a and then you obviously you got like the incompetent leader. But I mean these are more tropes than they are stuff specifically for red versus blue it's like we've we adapted them and what we wanted to do is we wanted to give people some sense of familiarity but like we've tried very hard to make these characters their own Mm -hmm. uh and i think we do a good job at that just making everyone's got something to them that makes them like very unique in their own way shape or form uh and uh one of our personal favorites being uh uh charlie bowden seeks character uh which i think is very funny he got brought on and way after I named had the character named Charlie, so it doesn't it doesn't get confusing at all. No, <laughs> it doesn't get confusing at all when we're doing this on uh, when we're doing these recordings. But yeah, uh, Charlie Bowden seeks character Milk. Uh, he's a personal <laughs> favorite of ours because uh, he was originally written very differently. So one of the things we did when we went back and made this show was uh, so the, the full history of it is that we had there was like I think half the cast that we have on this now my, me my like myself uh, Larry and other. Uh, uh, other game saw uh uh employee uh mark doherty he uh these were these were like we were like the three people who who pretty much started the show and we're like the out of the main cast we're like the three that are still around because we had three other people assigned to the roles of chief tank and uh milk and part of the thing also with uh with the show is when we first wrote it a lot of what we based the characters off of um were a lot of people in our actual friend group Mm. So like for me, Charlie is based probably he's Char- Char- Charlie. The character is based a lot on probably the worst parts of me mm-hmm. where uh, I, I definitely tried to create an over exaggerated version of myself with like the worst parts of myself being somebody who's just very whiny, um, just, you know, complains a lot because these I do that all the time, too. But like mm-hmm. this is like he I try to make him a little over exaggerated version of me Um we had a friend of our, like, uh, we, you know, we had, uh, Clyde, Mark Doherty's character. He's definitely based a little bit off Mark because he was, he was very good at Halo Reach and we were like, okay, well, what do we, you know, it's like Mark's very good at being a sniper. So we just, we based Clyde solely on like that. Um, a lot of the personality tanks, uh, parts of tank, uh, were based off, um, my friend Sam, who was like the original basis of the character because he's, he's definitely a little manic like he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and milk was a little actually, but we, we changed him up in the original writing. He was, uh, he was actually a little too much like caboose in the sense, like we, we were trying to find like, we were like, all right, let's make him dumb, but let's also make him crazy too. Mm-hmm. And then like, we, and then, um, and he was based off he a lot of because a lot of his personality was based off my one friend uh, Gabe who was playing the character originally, um, and then what ended up happening was we had uh, there was a little bit of I'm not to go too much into it because it's a lot there's a lot of personal stuff but uh, at one point when we were we were working on the show and then there was a little bit of a falling out with me and like um, a few a uh, few people in the uh, game saw group so and a- after the falling out happened i just didn't have the energy to work on the show because to me it was like oh this is a show based around my friendship with these guys and some of the friendship's been kind of like tainted so i'm like mm-hmm. i don't know if i really want to continue this and it wasn't until um my final semester at college where i just kind of like me and some friends were like talking like me it was me actually it was me larry and mark and we were all talking and i stumbled across some of the old scripts and we were reading the scripts and uh, while we while we were looking at them, we saw a lot of this like high school humor that made us cringe. We also saw a lot of like really funny moments that still held up to like this level of time. And we're like, you know, this was pretty good for what we wrote back in high school. This was still pretty good. 
Um, and we talked about it, and uh, I gotta give my friend Chris O'Connor props, because I think he said it best originally when we first said we were gonna stop the show. Uh, I was driving around with him one day, and I told him, yeah, no, we're because he helped work on the show a good amount, too, during the machinimating process, and he's like, well, why the, why are you stopping the show? It's like, it doesn't matter if the, uh, if your friends are involved with it, it's your thing, and at the time, I was like, you know, I, I was like, no, it, ha- it was based around the friendship, and it has to be, but I'm like, at late, years later, I'm like, no, he was, he was right, it's like, you know, these characters are more than just my friends. These are, they're their own, like, they're their own entities, really. These mm-hmm. characters are, like, their own, their own, their own people. And it, does, it like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter who's playing them in the end as long as, you know, they exist. So that, that, after, you know, that, I had that realization. I was like, you know, what, guys, why don't we just, why don't we try this again? And, uh, we agreed to it, but we realized we had to update the scripts. So, I think we've, we've got the first three episodes updated. We're in the process of getting the rest of them updated a bit because some, some of the humor is still good. It's just a matter of figuring out what's what. But the story structure is all the same. All the, all the structures for the stories that we have, uh, have they're still the same uh, that we did when we first started. Uh, so, so yeah, it's, uh, you know, been revamping it. And uh, I'm very proud to say, like, 10 years later, I think I think the show is much better the fact that uh, we held off mm-hmm. on with for those 10 years because... Um, honestly, like when we first, when we first did this, uh, the pilot episode that came out the first, the first time we did the pilot episode was my least favorite episode. I think I hated it. I was like, it was just like a hurdle I had to jump over originally where I'm like, okay, I like we gotta, we just gotta get this one out and then we can get to the good stuff. And, uh, honestly now after rewriting it and redoing it with the knowledge I know now, uh, I just, uh, it, it's like, it's one of my favorite episodes now, the pilot after we, after we redid it, pilot's now one of my favorite episodes. Nice, that's dope. Um, how did you did you guys come up with the name? Did you have a bunch of different names for Demolition Squad, or was that like an easy process? Um, God, I'm trying. It really is because this is me thinking back over like ten years now. Mm-hmm. So you had uh, it for ten years. The actual name. yeah, we've had we've okay. had we've had it set for ten years. Like a lot of like a lot. Like I said a lot of the stuff has relatively stayed the same. It was just mm-hmm. it was just kind of the jokes that we we had to edit over these because there was some stuff that just. We we did it, and it was a lot of stuff that did not age well. No, yeah, uh, yeah. over over the years. So it's obviously like we had you're to gonna have up. some outdated or you it's, know, it's your outdated humor's stuff. different back then. So you have to kind of adjust for what what. One thing, and also sometimes it's just a matter of like, what do we want to change up? Because I remember one thing. Um, you probably remember this in episode two, where the so where the character Phillips is joking about makes like the Clash of Clans joke. Mm-hmm. We talked about honestly. Um, changing that up to being like something involving uh raid shadow legends we talked about and just making a joke about a shameless raid shadow legends plug Mm -hmm. but and it it became like it became a conversation about okay what joke seems funnier and what can we do and we're like no we like the joke with clash of clans a little bit more nobody plays clash of clans anymore but just let's just keep it in there anyway Mm -hmm. uh but yeah so a lot of stuff had to get like updated for the show i just had i had one i'm trying to remember i just had i had a thought about that too i'm trying to uh think back on I, it might come back to me later but yeah i mean it's i mean even if you keep old jokes in it it's kind of like almost like an homage to like what you started with and kind of something that you probably played right is that is that or you, me you no well i know no? actually um actually uh larry played a lot of clash of clans okay. back in high school so that was like where i think a lot of that the came joke, from yeah so i mean it's still like a a blast from the past you know you're paying homage to like where you started um maybe like some of the newer generation won't understand it and they might like oh let me google this and then it kind of brings a new age uh like uh learning experience to people who who don't know about it yeah oh i just remembered uh so one of the things that i think doing the show now versus doing it back then and one of the reasons it's definitely one of the things i'm most proud of is back when we first because I, st- I think we have the first the first episode and the actual third episode um saved like mm-hmm. the original versions of because the third episode we're doing now was not the original third episode the second episode was actually broke up into two parts and we just called it episode two part one and two part two now mm-hmm. we just decided to make episode two part two just the official episode three it was like mm-hmm. a everyone was like why the fuck are you doing it this way i'm like because technically if you look it's like it's just we all wrote we wrote it in one script and mm-hmm. it was like a long script for the second episode we decided to break it up okay. but with uh but now but yeah so like the third episode was much it was a completely different episode than what, what it will be now uh but one of the things that uh, looking back on the footage uh from those original episodes is uh the cinematography 
I think in the in Demolition Squad is 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 actually very good being that's machinima. But I think I think the the cinematography in the show is a lot better now because before that before I because I went to I went to film school we all went to film school and uh, mm. I learned a lot from like Mark Carnseha who you guys originally had on the show mm-hmm. uh, that was a great mm-hmm. episode by the way but Mark Shout taught me yeah yeah Mark taught me so much he was like the guy who pretty much put me on the the track to being where I am now mm-hmm. and uh, he you know. I, he he went ahead and like de- definitely through his work and the work I've done with other professors has helped me learn great cinematography and I applied that to uh, Demolition Squad now versus when I originally did it which I had no concept of cinematography whatsoever so a lot of the shots just looked god awful mm-hmm. and had no sense like I even like se- in the sense of like visual gags I had to learn through like cinematography as well which I try to make as much use out of as possible so you know everything everything really helped and it it culminated like it, it is like like we had a conversation chris about whether i should use some of that stuff on my reel where it's like no this is this is a production whether it's machine yeah. or not it's still a production and as long as it showcases my work i think it's the best thing to put yeah, in there absolutely for that for that word though you keep throwing out machinima for people that may like we know what it is because we're familiar with we've seen it before like explain what machinima is so technically for those who may not know so technically machinima which i think it's really funny because anytime i say oh i work on a machinima people are like oh you work for the company and i go no 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 because because technically those guys are assholes because what they did was they coined they coined a term which the technical term is like for it not not to I don't know the exact description, but basically it's it's about filming something on like a third party platform, um, which is usually video games. It's 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 a sub genre of animation is what it is. It's like animation with less steps. So, uh, you know, but the problem with the company Machinima, because they they took the name and uh, because they were originally the ones who were mostly doing all of this. Uh, and because of that, they basically, they took the name and they coined the name. So now when people hear Machinima, they just think the company and they don't think of the art form as a whole. Right, right. Which, which I also think was really funny because my sound design teacher back at UB, he was actually the one who, he, Mark, uh, Mike, it was Mike, uh, I was, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say his last name. I always butcher his last name. There's no point to it, but, uh, Mike B, let's call him Mike B. Mike B, uh, went ahead and he, uh, he he was he mentioned the fact where he's like he he thought he thought of it, he's like oh maybe I'll have you guys do like a machinima project or something like that and there were legitimate people in the room that were like what's machinima and they're hmm. just like oh my god you guys are so young <laughs> meanwhile I just I kept my mouth shut because I was like I mean I know what it is. Like, I'll talk to I know what it is I'll just fucking talk to him about it later but yeah he said he's like no one makes machinima it. anymore let's he's, fucking do it well he said no one's makes no one makes machinimas anymore I'm like technically I tried but uh, <laughs> <laughs> this was before I started you were was, like you were like just you fucking wait. Yeah, no, I mean, like, he, he definitely was part of the thing that got me started on it. I don't know if you guys can see, you guys specifically, I actually have the poster for it made, uh, season one. I'll see if mm. I can angle it up there. Uh, season nice. one poster right up there. I put it in my place of honor in my apartment, uh, right up on that, right up behind the TV. It's good, good motivation. You get to look at, at what you've created every day while you're, while you're watching some TV. Yeah, plus when I have people over, people are like, oh, what's this? And then I can just plug, Let I can do show shameless you. plugs. Funny you ask. Go onto your YouTube and yeah, type in so, Game Saw Demolition Squad. Yes. If uh, yeah. anyone wants to see the show, go to once again Game Saw Game Saw Productions. Look, uh, you can uh, you can also go to my uh, Instagram at Game Saw uh, Pro and uh, look up all the look up uh, links to it as well. I'm actually I try to I try to be more active on the Instagram pages now. It was originally Facebook that we were uh, I used as the primary plugging, but Instagram has become very much mm-hmm. like it's become a better source for you know advertising mm-hmm. put it on tiktok put clips of it on tiktok yeah, oh, he, that is actually a fantastic Honestly, idea yeah, that is really a just, that is a fantastic idea yeah. you'll probably I'm, that's probably somewhere where it would blow up honestly yeah i i i, I that I, I can't believe i didn't think about that thank you steve that is a fantastic idea and i'm absolutely gonna start because i i was always like i don't know tiktok was always like something that i tried to avoid but Fuck it. as soon as you said that i realized i'm like oh my god there's like so it. many people i'm like there's so many people i like i follow now who it's, get it's most of their following from tiktok <laughs> and it's just the problem is not the problem it's just like tiktok is just so like everything is on tiktok you can find like mm-hmm. anything it's like yeah. almost like um like reddit for like videos it, it's just ridiculous yeah. like how many yeah, different, it's a good way to put it it's how many different like sub genres and and things uh-huh. that you can fucking run into and people who like the video games and, and stuff like that would definitely, I mean, that's, that's what I started doing with my knife throws. Cause 
I was like, fuck it. I'm, I'm doing this already. Might as well record it and chop up little videos. And I mean, it's definitely gotten more like views than I would ever think anything like that could get, you know? Yeah, exactly. I, 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 I totally think that it will blow up on there, honestly. Um, also, I guess we'll, we'll move on from that and go on to, um, you, you mentioned that you were working on a documentary. Is there any information you could um, tell about that? I know it's not technically your documentary either, so yeah, I, I just actually, want you um, to see what you could tell the viewers what you're working on in a sense. Yeah, I, I think I have free reign to talk about. I actually, um, the other night I went out drinking with um, the guy who's producing the documentary, and okay. I, I told I told him I was actually going to be on here. Okay. I, told, I, I, I plugged your guys' podcast to him. Oh, too, appreciate so it. It's, uh, yeah, like I said, long-time fan of the show. Yes. Uh, I've been fan of, I've been wanting to get, by, by the way, for those listening at home, <laughs> I've been wanting, I, I think it's about time I, I say this. Go ahead. I've been wanting, I've been wanting on, I've been wanting to come on this podcast since these guys plugged me in episode one, <laughs> and I've, it's been a process of me talking to Chris and be like, hey, when you, by the way, when, because I want to make sure I was free for this, so I'm like, when you guys plan on having me on the podcast, and he's just like, dude we got a we got a list of people we got a <laughs> list of people right now for the for this thing so it's like you got you gotta wait i'm like how many, how many people are, are, are ahead of me and they go like he's like oh, i don't know like three or five i'm like three or five people <laughs> you guys to, like talked about me in the first episode i thought i would have been at least in the third episode at Bro, least we gotta, maybe fourth we got a, like a google doc sheet of just people yeah of just people that we could hopefully well, just, like that are lined up yeah you know what i mean but yeah, yeah I mean, uh, listen, I'm I'm happy I made the list. That's that's what I will say because you guys had. I, I will say before I get into this doc project, let me let me compliment your guys' work. This, this is a fantastic podcast. I've I've enjoyed a lot of the people you've had on here. Um, I forget what her name was. There was someone you had talking about a lot of like mental health. Um, that was Talia. Ta- oh yeah, Talia. Talia. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that hers was, a good was one. Of, yeah, hers was one of my favorites because mm-hmm. it was just like I was listening to a lot of stuff she said, and I'm like, this is all like really deep and really true, and yeah. I, I vibe with that a lot. So she was a great shout episode. Out, shout out Talia. Check out her podcast, Talia Talks, yep. on all uh, all major streaming platforms for podcasts. She's dope. yeah, that was a, that was a good episode. So, really enjoyed yeah. that one. Yeah, and obviously I'm a huge fan of Mark Karan Seha, so I'm a, a huge fan of his. Yep. Which I actually was really happy to get sidetracked again before i go talking about the doc uh one of my other favorite pieces i ever got to work on was 3031 mm-hmm. uh that um chris you were once once again part of that as well that shoot 3031 and uh mark got to do the scoring for that which uh i was really excited to go to him about because obviously noisemaker media's uh music company first and uh he got to he just got to go to town like i told him I, like i was talking to him and i was messaging about stuff and i just basically I, I let him go to town i i gave him i gave him the rough i gave him the rough copy of the uh the the edit and uh i said like this is basically how it's looking which uh 3031 is my attempt at something in the cyberpunk genre which i'm looking to touch again in some sort of feature film capacity at some point in my life uh but with uh I've already got ideas spinning on, on stuff like that, but I'd love to bring Mark back again to help me with the score in any way, shape or form on that, yeah. because that's, he did a fantastic job with the mm-hmm. music on that. And I was really happy with it. Um, but yeah, you guys have had a lot of great guests on the podcast. And I'm, ex- I'm, I'm happy to be amongst them. <laughs> I'm happy to be amongst such fantastic guests. If uh, for some reason, Mark, not to cut you off, Dan, if for some reason, Mark, if you ever listen to this specific part of this specific episode, he sent me something to listen to. And I haven't responded. Like I responded to him, but I haven't given him the feedback he wants yet. Mark, I apologize. It's I have listened to it. I haven't listened to it the way that I wanted to yet. And I want to give you the full, actual good. I don't want to half-ass my feedback to you. So, Mark, if you ever hear this, like I'm not avoiding it. I just want to do it the right way. And I've listened to most of it, but I want to listen to it uh, the way I, that a specific good way that I want to. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> sidebar, throwing that out there. Yeah. <laughs> So, so I'll get to the I'll get to the stuff you guys wanted me to talk about, which is about the doc. Technically, I'm doing two doc projects right now, which I'll I'll, I'll talk a little bit about both. Uh, let me talk about the first one that I feel like was the one that got me set up here in Buffalo, which mm-hmm. was uh, my like for full time capacity. It's what got me involved in this. So I I very much love this city um, because okay. it is it is uh, Buffalo has been like since coming here for school i've learned that buffalo is becoming an ever-growing film centric community Mm -hmm. and um there's a lot more stuff that's getting made here like uh, i think the biggest thing that before covid hit one of the biggest things that hit uh that came to this city was uh quiet place two which almost i'm gonna say about 75 percent of the film was shot here in this city 
Uh, and I actually know people who got to work on it. I was actually this close to getting on that shoot myself because I knew someone who knew the assistant director who was going to help get me on that, but the assistant director got changed out, so I couldn't... I lost that connection to get me in. Lost the but plug. I know, I know. I was I was actually a bit devastated, the fact I couldn't get on Quiet Place 2 because I, I loved the first one so much, and mm-hmm. that would have been amazing to get on the second one. That was but the film with uh, John... Um, that was John Krasinski. Krasinski's film, yeah. yeah. Right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I almost got, like I said, I almost got I almost got to work with him, and I was very disappointed that I just missed that opportunity. And then um, Guillermo del Toro was here recently shooting some stuff for his Nightmare Alley remake that he's doing with Bradley Cooper. So they were up here recently. Uh, and it, it, more and more, just more films are getting shot here for the same reason people go to Atlanta, uh, and jo- uh, Atlanta, Georgia, for like tax credits and uh, other mm-hmm. stuff like that. And jo- Buffalo actually has some very interesting looks about it, which is what I think also make people want to like shoot here as well. Uh, But that being said, one film that uh, was the film that really got me involved in Buffalo's film community was this film that just recently got made uh, back in 2019, uh, Givers of Death, G.O.D. I won't talk too much about that because I don't know if that's my project to necessarily plug, but I will say as somebody who's both seen the film and watched the film, it uh, it it was fantastic. It was made by... Buffalo uh, director, uh, now living in LA, Buffalo director, uh, Addison Henderson, an amazing fucking man, let me tell you. Uh, He has officially become one of my sources of inspiration. Um, Had a great time being able to work with him and very excited to work with him in the future, which I think me and him will probably be doing because me and him vibe really well. Um, So... He, his sister, uh, Rachel Henderson, who I'm also working with, she brought me on to that film to work for my internship for my last semester at school. Um, she went ahead and brought me on to work um, for behind the scenes. I got to I got to be the behind the scenes videographer on that entire shoot. And that was such an amazing opportunity because I got to watch and document that film being made from start to finish. Uh, and it was such an amazing learning experience. I'm incredibly grateful. And that film has actually become essentially my standards for how films should be made. Like it was, it was done so professionally. Like it's, I think it's the most professional thing I've, I've gotten to work on mm-hmm. since. Like it had, it had like an amazing crew, a great cast. Uh, everyone vibed really well with each other. And I, sure, obviously it had production issues, like ev- everything does, and it got people stressed out. But that's you take the good with the bad, and it was. It was an amazing shoot, and I think the film looks absolutely amazing. And it actually just won um, Best Screenplay at the uh, Black International Film Festival. Nice. So that's it's got a huge thing riding for it right now. Uh, so I'm in the process of working with uh, Rachel on a uh, on the full feature length documentary depicting the how that film got made. And oh, okay. uh, I know Addison is really looking forward to that. We're going to be having somewhat of a little rough cut ready for him in December. So that's like, that's my weekends right now. That's my weekends working on that piece. Mm-hmm. Um, my weekdays are, are spent right now working on another documentary piece um, for another person I met on Givers of Death. Um, local uh, local Buffalo entrepreneur, uh, JJ Alfieri. Um, also a fantastic man. He is, um, he is, he also went to UB. He went to UB uh, to work in the film and indi- to want to work in the film industry. But he grew up, um, with a lot of, with family members who, who worked the, the restaurant bar scene. So he kind of got like, he wanted to work film all of his life, but he got drafted into the bar restaurant scene and he worked, he had to work for his family. And then him and his sister, uh, they set out on their own who his sister also, uh, her sister, his sister, Gabby, uh, also went to school for film. She was very much interested in doing documentary work. So um, the two of them originally went to school for film, got stuck in their family businesses, and they decided, n- taking the bar knowledge that they they collected over the years working for their dad, uh, the two of them and her husband, Patrick, created a bar called DBGB's, which was inspired by the New York City bar CBGB's. <laughs> okay. And um, that bar went ahead and uh, it ran for, say, like, 10 to 15 years maybe 20 i forget the exact number that's something that's we've talked about before i just can't think off the top of my head what the number was it ran for many years though ran for many years and this place was like full-on sex drugs and rock and roll i've heard the stories and i i've been to this bar a couple times myself and uh, it definitely lives up to those those type of claims uh and uh they've had a lot of different people come through there a lot of different musical acts like uh the spin doctors was a band that played through there um 
Chris, I'm sure I'm sure I can look I can get a list of names and I'm sure I'm sure you guys could probably recognize some of these some of these bands because I'm not that big of a musical guy, but I'm mm-hmm. sure some of these bands because I've heard at least I've heard, or at least heard some of the names and they definitely st- like scream bigger names and these guys have done a lot of different things. And he's had some celebrities go through there too. Like uh Addison and JJ were both friends with Chadwick Bozeman, so Chadwick mm-hmm. hung out there a good amount. Oh, really? uh, I actually got to, I didn't get to talk to him that much, which is a huge, um, regret I will always have now because I always figured oh, I'll talk to him in his spare time. But on the set of Givers of Death, he actually came Chadwick Boseman to the set one day, uh, to support Addison and, uh, JJ and all of them. So, um, but I was, I was asked by all the producers because I was doing behind the scenes stuff. They're like, do not go up to him with a camera. Do mm. not stress him out in any way, shape or form. So because of that, I just said, I'll just, I'll just fucking avoid him. The mm-hmm. whole the whole time, and I'll talk to him at a later date because I don't want to. What am I gonna do anyway? Am I gonna? Because people ask like, "Oh, why didn't you go up and talk to Chadwick?" And I'm like, "Because what am I gonna do? Am I gonna go up and go? I loved you in Black Panther. I thought you were really good in the film Twenty One. Like, I'm like, no. If I'm gonna go up and you know bother the guy, at least want to just have a conversation that isn't just about me being like a fanboy or something. Yeah. So, you know, I just you know, but unfortunately, you know, you can't predict the future. And how was I supposed to know that you know what was gonna happen happen? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so what we're doing now is, uh, but yeah, so like a lot of people have come through this bar. Uh, Ron Perlman actually is another name that I know came through there, uh, That's a good name. because they worked, yeah, they worked, he worked with him on, uh, cause JJ's gotten more into the film scene over the years. He's used DBGBs as, uh, a location for certain films. Cause he's on, the guy owns about like four different bars okay. or he did own four different bars. COVID has kind of taken its course and is mm-hmm. hit up here in Buffalo. And, uh, Jay's unfortunately had to close down two of his bars, one of which being DBGBs, which was his, uh, his, his essentially he, like his child. It was the first, it was really the first bar he, he opened. And that was the first bar that got him started on the, his, uh, his, like, you know, his, his, his reign of the city. Like, he talked to this guy. He definitely feels like a kingpin just because it feels like he knows <laughs> a lot of the people in this city. So, uh, like, he even knows every, he knows everything from, like, local, like, talent to, like, political officials in this city. I've met a couple political officials just by, you know, hanging out with these guys. Mm-hmm. So, right. I'm fr- I think I'm friends with one of them on Facebook right now. But, yeah, so with... Uh, but yeah, so he wanted to, he wanted, he brought me on because I've worked along with the work I did on the Givers of Death documentary. I did a piece for him and Addison about, uh, JJ's up and coming film career, which is on working on film, local Muffalo films, like, uh, The Adventures of Wolf Boy, which is getting an American release now, which I actually, I did get to see at the, uh, Buffalo International Film Festival. Very good film. Recommend looking it up. The Adventures of Wolf Boy. And then a film that is currently out right now, a film called Clover. Um, which was, it's just another, another great, uh, great film. Uh, I actually, I, I, that one I love, I think a little bit more because, uh, it did such a great job of mixing comedy with the crime drama, uh, genre. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that was done by, um, John Abrahams, uh, great director, great actor, and had a few different names in there, including Chaz Palmetarian. Uh, and Jay got to do a great scene with him as well. So with, um, with this, he brought me on because I've worked with Jay a couple times now, and he likes what I do, uh, and he likes my quality of work, and me and him mesh really well. So he brought me on. He told me he wanted to do this documentary piece. He wanted me to do this piece to document the the full like life of DBGBs, and he's told me the story. We actually, the other day, wrote out the full rubric of the direction we want this story to go, and uh, we're officially starting tomorrow on conducting all the interviews for it. But it's. I think it's gonna be. It's gonna be a great piece. Um, he originally wasn't sure what he wanted to do with it. Now he's like, no, I'm gonna submit this to film festivals. So we're we're doing that. Uh, I'm, he's brought me on. He's 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 been continuously upgrading my position. I, I'm not. He he tells me now I'm gonna be labeled as a producer on it, which is a very exciting thing for me. And it's you know I'm I'm very excited to work on this thing. It's it's I'm, I think it's gonna be a great story. I'm very much excited to work with him on this. And, uh, I'm excited to see it. it will, I'll be excited to see it once it's done, whether it does something or not, uh, like it goes, it goes anywhere or not, it gets picked up on a streaming service. I think it's just a story that's worth telling. Mm-hmm. I've watched a good amount of documentaries about like the, about different like bar locations. So I think this definitely stacks up to the story of a lot of these places as well. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's like, that's, that's essentially my, my whole, that, that's, that's the next like about year of my life right now and what I'm doing up here in Buffalo. That's dope. Is there like a, a time frame that it's you're shooting for, to like, or you so, know I mean? or just kind of when it's done, it's done, and then you move from there? So I'll talk about this because I don't think this is um, too much of a uh, issue not to talk about. 
we went ahead and um, originally, because we did do a bit of work already on this. We have done a couple interviews, but we're we've been in the process. We're trying to find our like flow. We've gone through a couple different like you know crew to work on this and everything like that. And um, one of the things we originally set out to do was we wanted to try and get this done by New Year's. Uh, we want to try and get the or at least be done filming by New Year's. Because I was going to say, get it, it shot and then just move and post for the rest of the... Afternoon. Yeah, and the reason we wanted to do that is because he he originally... Because he's in the he was in the process of getting all of his places back open or the places he wanted to keep back open. Um, and he was going to open up DVGBs for, like, the remainder of this year and then have one big final party on, um, on New Year's and then close the doors on New Year's. And that was... That was kind of where we were thinking we were going to end it by. We were going to show the, the, the we were going to film the New Year's party and then we were going to sh- like film them locking up the doors one last time. And that would be, that would be like the end. But, um, unfortunately he, that didn't happen. He had to close the bar up earlier for financial purposes. So we, so the fact that we don't have to do that anymore kind of just left us in a position where we're like, okay, well we don't really have a, a set time frame on this. Let's just get these interviews done and let's edit as we go and let's just see where we go from there because we're not we're not trying to make a specific like uh we're not trying to make like a specific film festival it's just i i think he's expecting like he's told me he's like all right we can you know let's let's work on this for it let's probably like a year he's, he's saying like a year i think less than a year but we're gonna see where it goes from there all right because uh there's one of the things we have to do is that there's gonna be there's some people we have to interview that like aren't in the city of Buffalo. Like for the next couple months, we're interviewing people who are here in Buffalo, but we're going to have to travel a little bit to different locations. Like I I think we're going to travel, we're going to be traveling to LA um, for a bit to interview some people, which that should be, I know Chris, you just recently went to, went out to LA and that was probably a great time uh, for your project you're working on. Yeah, absolutely. It was fun. Yeah. One thing I actually, I'll talk about right now, and this is me working with Chris. uh, I don't know if if Chris is going to be having me mention this, but I actually, um, when we were looking for crew, Originally for this, uh, Chris was one of the first people I went to on this, mm. and uh, this is this is something this will lead into something uh, I know you guys originally wanted to talk to me about, which was li- the actual living in the city of Buffalo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so um, I going to UB like I had I had some friends that I lived with, and uh, I still am friends with them, but uh, living with them was just an absolute nightmare uh, for a multitude of reasons. They're great guys. It's just I've come to realize I can't live with people. The no, most I, I was. The most I was uh, willing to do was I was li- willing to live with uh, Chris and uh, and our good buddy Charlie because they were the two guys I asked because they were two people I know like aside with working with no- knowing Chris and his level of quality he can bring to any sort of production and that's one of the things I wanted on this thing was solid quality and the same thing with everything I do with him uh, but aside from that they're like two people I know who can like just you know, they could just they could drop things in a moment's notice to take because it was going to be a good I mean it was a pay, this is a paid production we'd get we'd be getting paid we'd be sharing we'd be and the rents in Buffalo are actually really affordable Chris yes. I know you Dirt saw cheap. yeah you saw a lot of the rents too that are in the city so a lot of the rents are pretty affordable especially share like a place shared between like three guys yeah would be uh not bad at all so we were you know we were all set to come on this thing and these guys were on board to come on and work on this production and i was really excited about it and then i think the week before we were about to go f- drive up and look at some stuff chris comes to me he's like so listen um another project <laughs> is well he comes to me and he's like so i got some really bad news and i'm like why what's up and he's like uh i got a <laughs> there's another project opening up and this is like a personal project for for me but it's I've, we've been waiting for a while for it to have an opening and we got a meeting with this guy who's looking to finance it so I, I gotta wait a little bit and hear like to hear back from this guy and i'm like okay all right so uh i have to wait an extra week for which i was unemployed and just sitting at home <laughs> doing nothing waiting to hear back because i was i was like do i look for a place on my own do i yeah. wait to hear these guys so i'm like i i couldn't do anything i don't i had to wait being in limbo yeah you i was in piece limbo of shit i know and then he comes back to me and he's like he's like dude i'm like so sorry i have to take this job which i, I know you felt really you told me so often you felt really bad about it but i told you i'm like it's it's you know it's it's a job it's yeah you know you gotta t- you gotta do what you gotta do it's like it's like it's one thing to take a job like a job that's paying and uh you know that i i could offer you and just uh and work on that it's another thing to get financing for a production that you are very passionate about. And like, mm. that's just business. Do whatever yeah. do. You got to do whatever the best business decision is. And then unfortunately, Charlie backed out as well. Cause he was, he just wasn't comfortable with the notion of moving someplace. He didn't know anything about if it was not, if it was going to be just like just me, mm-hmm. 
which I was slightly insulted because like he he goes ahead and uh, I'm, I'm not mad at him about it, but I just remember I thought his logic was a little dumb. And I, I think I've told him this, too. If not, I'll tell him at some point. But I, I thought it was I thought it was a little dumb because he's just like, I think you're going to it's like, oh, well, like, well, it's like, you know, on the weeks we're not we're, days we're not working. It's like, what if I what if uh, you want to go out and you want to do something? And it's like, I don't have anyone to hang out with. And I go, all right, first of all, why? What makes you think like I'm not going to bring you to shit like? What, what, what do you think? I'm going to, like, leave the apartment one day and go, fuck you, I'm going to hang out with all my other friends. Ha, 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 fun just sitting here alone, loser. <laughs> like, nerd. <laughs> yeah, nerd. nerd. No, I'm like, I'm like, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to bring you to places. I'm going to bring you shit. I'm going to introduce you to people because that leads me to my second point is that the idea of bringing you and Chris up here is to get you guys more involved in Buffalo's growing film community and lead that to, like, some possible opportunities. Like, I told Chris, J.D. knows a lot of musicians. Like, we're interviewing a lot of musicians for this documentary piece you could easily you could easily grow the iconic visions brand yeah uh which is his company in case that hasn't been mentioned on the podcast before but he can easily um grow his brand and get some clients while we're working on this whole thing you know through that whole process so i'm like you know but uh you know and same with charlie i'm like charlie we're gonna be i'm gonna be introducing you to people and hopefully get we'll get more jobs as we're working and we're going through the year lease that we're gonna get but he just wasn't comfortable with it, which is fine. So eventually, I just I just decide I'm like I'm just gonna move up here by myself. Like I had to talk pay for the documentary because obviously living on my own, I need to adjust pay rates, which we did. And as far as I know, as far as it looks right now, it's working. Mm-hmm. Um, I might have to negotiate again, but I'm also just looking for other sources of employment. Yeah. Um, which is to be expected. I want more. I want more jobs anyway. But so yeah, with um, we go ahead and um. So I got I got this place and as you guys can see through the video I, I think it's I think it's relatively nice it's a studio uh, I like the place a good amount and like I I got people who come up here and they're always like oh this is really good for a studio apartment and I'm like so I thought oh, that's what I thought um, so uh, actually I don't know if, I I think I've mentioned it to you Chris one of the things we're doing on this this documentary piece right now is to because I, I could have been like, all right, let's... Because we had a whole meeting about it, me and JJ. We're like, mm-hmm. how are we going to do this for crew? Because like, I, this is unfortunately too much for me to handle on my own. Um, I can't handle managing the camera and the audio equipment at the same exact time. Yeah. Like, if we want if we want it to work well, I have to be on one or the other. We can't... I can't do both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, because... I've it, tried it that. It's, it's tough. Yeah, for something like this, I'm like we got to make it look, look and sound great. And it's gotta, it's, we, I got, I gotta be on both. I gotta be on one or the other. So it's like, well, what do we do? And, um, originally we talked about just, we talked about going to the local Buffalo f- film talent, but I know a lot of these guys are going to want like a good amount of money. And we're trying to, we're trying to cut corners and do this gorilla style. So, mm-hmm. uh, it's like, well, what do we do? And also we got to like rent the equipment and stuff like that. So we got to pull money out for the budget and we're trying to do this on like specific quality of stuff. It's like, well, what do you do? Uh, and we just decided, um, couple weeks back and we're in the process of working with them now we brought on interns from okay. the university of buffalo for this which i i absolutely love because of the fact that so many we've got like five interns we're working with on this and we've got a whole production schedule set up and the, each of these guys are working different days uh and what's great about these guys is that um so many of them are just looking for experience and yeah. uh they, they all remind me of me when i first came to ub not only just for their eagerness to want to work on stuff and get their name out there but also just for the sole sole thing of they have no idea anything about this city in the slightest like they remind like when i first came to this city i was so nervous in the sense of like oh i have no idea what's around the area i don't know where this street is i don't know where this street is i'm like can i park here i don't know and uh this was like three and this is like three years ago now i'm just like oh i'm gonna go down to allen street i'm gonna hang out and then i'm gonna go over to main street and just park my car on main street and just leave it there the cops won't come on the weekends and i'm like the cops won't give me a ticket on the weekends it's fine and um you know now i got all these now i got all these like 18 and 19 year olds who are coming on and i just i think it's i was talking i was joking with my friend rachel about this where i was just like it's like because she was the one who brought me on as an intern back when i was in school and we just joke about this i'm like look how it came full circle look how <laughs> i started off in this working in this as an intern and now and i i do nothing and now now i'm now i'm bringing on interns and i'm telling them how to survive in this city <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy how that works right life comes full circle really quick yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm yep. hoping to do right by these, by these kids as well. Like that's, I, I, I want people to succeed. I think Chris can vouch for this. I'm very big on if I'll, if I'm friends with somebody, if they, if a friend of mine succeeds, I succeed, which is why I always try to throw so much at people I like, uh, to help them get where they need to be. Uh, so yeah, that's, this is essentially where we're at right now with this doc. We start tomorrow. I'm very excited about it. I gotta, after this, I gotta, I gotta get, I gotta get dressed and I gotta 
do some more. <laughs> I gotta do, I gotta, I gotta work, I gotta, I gotta work a bit. So, but yeah, so that's, that's, uh, that's where it is right now. Is there anything, anything you guys specifically want to know about Buffalo living at all or? I mean, um, I mean, I'd love to go there. We had a friend that lived up there for a little while, but, um, I know it's like a very, is it a, like a, like a, not a liberal, but like a progressive city. Like it's a very, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can. I think it's. I think it's honestly kind of. It's definitely a liberal city. I think it's. Yeah. I, I think it's got that because I mean, like you know, it's. It's. It's definitely progressive. It's. It's interesting. Um, the one thing I always say about this city that's always makes me laugh is how like there's no. Normally, when you go to a city, like when it comes to like um the wealth and like the in, the income areas, normally it's like okay, this area is designated as like the ri- like the one percent like very rich area. The the upper class and then you branch out to like the middle class sections and then eventually there's another section here that's like specifically lower class buffalo doesn't have that buffalo is like you can be like in a really nice looking street and then make one corner and you're in a slum like there's no <laughs> gap in any of it there's no like keep it's just, on your toes yeah i mean you have to really learn what's the but like even when I was trying to get set up in an apartment i like i had to really think back and i had to talk to a lot of people i know who are locals Mm-hmm. and be like okay like this section here is like the best area but it's also the little the most pricey so like what if i go here and here and it, it was like a whole it was like a whole thing trying to find the best section of the city to live in and i'm actually really happy with where i'm set up now because it's 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 very much i think it's the, it's the best place it could be the street's a really nice street it's right near downtown i'm like a five to ten minute drive from anything i really need to get to so it's 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 like you know it's the best i could absolutely hope for in the it, when living here, yeah. I want to make a trip up there. I want to go to a Bills game. If you and like oh, Bills if Mafia, you, like when it actually if you make comes a trip, let me the... know. If you want to make a trip up here, let me know. I'll meet up with you. We'll go out for some drinks. I'll tell you where the I'll tell you where to go and get some good get some good drinks here in the city. Fucking a yeah. If I can uh, ever budget my time correctly to get up there, I'd love yeah. to do it. Yeah, I mean, I got the time for it right now. That's the thing. Like that's the also the other thing I like about this project is it leaves me with a lot of at least it, it's we're keeping busy, but it also leaves me with a lot of free time to like really get my own stuff off the ground like i Mm -hmm. I, i'm working with i i actually talked to jj i'm i'm gonna be working with him and chris kelly soon on a short film that i just finished up writing the first draft for and uh we're picking that which i I also have a after this is done chris i have to talk to you about some dates that i was talking with uh alex haynes about for this whole thing okay yeah show me some Uh, dates when you're done yeah but yeah, so that's something we're working on right now. I'm in the process too of like I- I've got so much I want to do in the works for this city. Like I'm, I'm I want to contribute very much to growing the city's film industry up. Give it five wanna... years, Dan's gonna be the mayor. I <laughs> I wanna I wanna <laughs> grow it up. I don't know about mayor, but let's see. somebody somebody Lady with 2020. <laughs> somebody, so, oh my god, don't bring that up again. Don't get don't get the don't get the people who are gonna listen to this started on that again. I thought I was I thought I I I outgrew that. <laughs> I refuse to say oh man honestly the funny thing about that is um if you remember the uh the mannequin challenge that we had everything comes full circle you literally had kanye 2020 on the board and look what happened i don't i don't like to think about thanks it thanks a lot dan yeah i don't like to, yeah that's that's why i don't like to think about it because you, you you predicted the things that probably shouldn't have been predicted so just I keep all of your predictions for the future like especially the next year you know, keep them positive. I found right? I found the book that the Simpsons based all of their jokes off of, and I just decided to roll with it. Yeah. <laughs> nah, man. Matt Groening's a... I think that's how you say his last name. He's a fucking time traveler. Yeah. I'm convinced. Yep. And Elon Musk is an alien. Yeah. Elon Musk is an alien, and so is fucking uh, Nikola Tesla. Yeah. He was from Venus. It's real. I it's looked real. it up. Yep. He did. He sent us like a full page fucking <laughs> like documents from who knows who photoshopped them or they might be real. Who knows? I'm not going to lie. I feel a little, I feel a little bad right now because I feel like I've just I've just talked nonstop for nah, a, a solid hour, you. which I know you. is technically what you guys want. But yeah. I feel like I just took so much time away from you guys asking anything. I'm not sure. I, no, I, I mean, Honestly, when you talk a lot then sometimes you don't need the follow-ups because you're answering the questions that we you're already... answering you're kind of answering what we would have yeah, followed up with exactly is, so it's yeah. just yeah. perfect i blame i blame matt dixon because he makes me self-conscious about that like you've listened to his podcast you heard me on his on, on his podcast he he goes ahead and he uh he he'll 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 make fun of that all the time and now it makes me self-conscious about what um, i'm talking um, on people's podcasts. you I'm you and matt gonna... have a good chemistry with that though like yeah. it's it's almost like become like its own like little shtick like yeah. it's 
it's actually kind of inter- like it's it it's works an, it, for the two of you. you it, know? it is. It is in a lot of ways. I do. I do try. <laughs> I try to bust his chops whenever humanly possible about this type of thing. Although he just throws it right. Like I said, he just throws it right back in my face. Is like with uh, obviously with like talking too much. But like I, I remember when I was on children's programming talking about this stuff. I was very. I, I it's a lot different than when we did Zarcast together. Zarcast mm. was just kind of we were just talking fucking over each other fun. and fucking doing yeah. Who knows? But it was, with with children's programming though, he tries to run that a little more professional. I'm like, all right, I gotta like, you know, I, I I'm not gonna be as much of a of a an asshole as I normally am to him. I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna be professional about this. And I, I say that to myself, and then he immediately starts going and poking fun at the fact that uh, y- you know, I talk so much, and I'm like, all right, well, I was gonna try not to do that, but thank you for thank you for immediately just just throwing it out there we could have gone the entire the entire episode and not had me interrupt anybody but <laughs> you had to you had to immediately put, put like you know shed light on it shout out uh ch- children's programming shout out dixon and parodies they're doing good things too so check out their podcast i gotta go listen back to their la- last episode they did because nick parodies after I, I think he made a comment about me and i just mm-hmm. was i i have to go back and actually listen to it because i was I, it slipped by me what he actually said uh-huh because uh, i didn't hear it because he i think he said it really low okay but i just uh i just i really want to listen to what he said because of the fact that i just on dixon's podcast the day that i was on and he wasn't on there i was just calling him a like just calling him wet bread <laughs> oh no i'm not wet, wet a wet blanket i was just calling him a wet blanket <laughs> I, was, I actually listened to that episode <laughs> i just yeah, called him I was, yeah you just called him a wet blanket you for said no like reason. your wet blanket of a co-host and, yeah your wet blanket of a co-host yeah, yeah, yeah. because it, for no reason other than just i listened to i listened to him talk and it's just it was just something that me and a friend of mine who were listening to the podcast just i just i just said that it just stuck mm. so it was just it's just because like he dixon's like what's a wet blanket i'm like it's what your co-host is <laughs> <laughs> nick nick is a. Uh, you gotta listen to him though nick's nick's like very dry subtle humor like it yeah oh have to, like, i'm well tuned, aware like how he's his humor along, is fucking what, amazing yeah though. along with your guys podcast like i'm also a very big fan of children's programming and i actually do agree with a lot of stuff that nick ends up saying from when yeah. i listen to him with, with him talking so I'm, that's just the thing that i think is also funny i'm like i'm insulting him but i very much agree with a lot of stuff he says i think the only time i got annoyed with him is when he started like talking smack about Zack snyder uh that was about but each to each his own i'm not gonna i'm not i'm not like my other friend who, uh frankie who's gonna like rip someone a new one if they talk bad about his lord and savior mm-hmm. um with that with that <clears throat> that was actually something he actually just reminded me about that sorry i'm gonna clear my throat you kept talking like with all your productions and like you know uh oh you know there's flaws here but i you know it's there's flaws with this one there's flaws with that one you know <laughs> with anything you make there's gonna be flaws and just like keep in mind that they're doing like an eighty million dollar reboot to the fucking Justice League movie. Now, yeah, uh, hold, on a, minute, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. It is. It is not a reboot to reshoot, to, reboot, recut. restructure, there, whatever the fuck you want to call well, it. Well, no. Technically, what it is is that okay. I don't know what's going on with the reshoot part of it, but technically, I, as far as I can tell from what I've heard, it's mainly supposed to be because like the whole thing with that. It's actually kind of it's it's kind of shitty what they did to Zack Snyder because mm-hmm. uh, what it was is that they shot Justice League and they it was like eighty percent done. Mm-hmm, and then his yeah. daughter unfortunately killed herself uh and he had to leave the production from there and um instead of just waiting for him to recuperate from it they just they brought on a whole new director they brought on joss whedon and joss whedon yeah. went ahead and he went uh instead of just finishing up the last 20 percent of the film that needed to get done he just said no nah, let's just reshoot all of it and i'm like I'm, and, he, and he took his the original script and he just mangled it and just turned it into something completely different because i mean you can see in the trailer that zach put out at DC fandom, it's a very different film totally different. than what it's a completely different film than what originally got like put out in the theatrical cut. Like, the, like there's some people that are like going to die in this one that did not, like they, they even show in the trailer. There's some people who die in this that are not even seen at the end or that are seen at the end of the theatrical cut. It's like, all right, this is absolutely a different film altogether. Uh, and it's, it's so different that it's like, it's four hours long and their HBO max is putting it out as like a series, like a four part series, which I'm very yeah. excited for actually, which I think that's like the best way Zach's films can get done. Cause he, he makes very long things. He makes very long pieces and something like a four hour long series. It's like the best thing he can really hope for as a creator. Yeah. I'm excited for that because I thought I wanted that to be good. Like I thought the wonder woman, I got to see the second one, but the wonder woman movie was great um oh, i'm Batman very excited man i enjoyed most of it yeah like um, to, to man of steel i thought was good 
it's it's kind of funny what you're saying though with, because you mentioned like with stuff with flaws like, I, I don't think any movie's perfect I, I i think you can enjoy it also like a bad movie like i enjoy batman vs superman immensely i love that movie i i will acknowledge a lot of the flaws in it there's some things that people complain about that are very much like criticisms that are just you looking for problems but there are things with the flaws in the film or at least with this theatrical cut i think the director's cut does a good job of covering up a lot of them but there's there's flaws that i acknowledge that people like harp on the film for and it's like yeah no i agree those are you know those, those are notable flaws but but no film is perfect if you can watch a movie and just if you can accept the flaws in a film um and still love it then more power to you that's like you know because like uh, there's movies i absolutely hate but people love and i'm like i'm not gonna shit on them i mean i it's like i i hate them for my reasons you love it for your reasons and that's like you know more power to you I'll talk shit about the movie. I won't talk shit about you for liking it, though. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's the same thing that I think with the DC films. There are some people who don't like them. It's like, all right, well, I'm not going to shit on you for not liking them. Just don't shit on me for liking them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Um, Where we're at. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I think, Chris, you got anything left? Dan, you got anything left you want to? Promote, get off your chest, um, shit well, on your old roommates. What is it? No, I love no, I love those guys. It's just I can't live with them anymore. Yeah, those <laughs> I can't, slobs. I can't live with them anymore. But I've been trying to hang out with them, honestly, since being here. But they're so busy with their schoolwork and shit. It just it's hard. But the uh, last thing I will say, um, among my five year plan, in the process of actually writing a feature film right now, I will definitely come back to you guys personally to talk about it. I think I've already, I've already talked about this with Chris, the film I'm currently writing right now. I won't talk too much about it because unless until I get the first draft done, I'm not going to start plugging it, but, uh, hopefully everything in my five year plan goes like accordingly. I can eventually get that film made. So like I, like I said, Buffalo is the place where a lot of my career is going to start moving forward. So it's a exciting experience and hopefully people can eventually see more of my work in the near future. So your five-year plan is um, Demolition Squad on TikTok. Um, <laughs> These finish two this documentary. documentary finish get your two. own. Get the both documentaries done. Get your own thing up. Your own productions up and running. Uh, Grief Chapter Two and Mayor. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah. Those are all. The mayor is is still iffy, but if it's if it's beneficial, then yes, I will I will run for mayor. If it's if it's at some point beneficial in my life. Fucking send it, bud. Run we'll for send. mayor. Full, fucking Full send, send, buddy. Fucking send it, bud. Well, yeah. If you guys, if you guys are, oh my god, I I gotta rewatch that show. I gotta re, I gotta rewatch. Uh, what's uh, what's it called? Letter Kenny. I gotta rewatch Letter Kenny. I gotta, I gotta get into that. that. I haven't yeah. seen it yet. I got I got hassled. I got like I pretty much got bullied into watching Letter Kenny because everyone in my close friend group just started quoting it, and they're like, "You haven't seen Letter Kenny? Why the hell haven't you seen Letter Kenny? We gotta make you sit down and watch. It's so great." And then it like it was one of those things where it's like people kept telling me to watch it. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to watch this now, mm-hmm. but I got so bored I watched it. And I'm like, "All right, all right, this is this is a good show," but mm-hmm. I'm not gonna hassle anybody to watch it. But so, oh man, all right, I gotta we we gotta wrap this. I gotta go watch Borat. I haven't seen oh. it. Yet. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan, we definitely appreciate you being here. We're going to um, plug all your shit, too. We'll, we'll send links out to the to the fans. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, we appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate being on the show. Like I said, big fan, big fan. Can't wait to can't wait to go back and listen to how I didn't shut up for about an hour and a half. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I can't wait to go That's back. That's why we have the guest on, man. Yeah, like, we need them to speak. We do the episodes every now and then where it's just me and Chris, but we bring the, the, the we like to bring people on one that at least have something interesting going on, which you do. And two, like, that will talk. Like, we don't have to pull, like, the fucking information out of them. Yeah, I don't like, want one or You know what I mean? Like, at that yeah, point, so it's like, why, why interview somebody if you're going to just, like, give me yes or no answers? Yeah. So, did, like, are you working on a documentary? Yeah. And then it's like, <laughs> yeah, it what's like it all. about? Shit, let me pull your you? teeth to get you a fucking yeah, answer. Like, like, can I, let, me, let me twist your arm a little bit here. Yeah. So, but I no, appreciate it was good. That. We appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate letting me come on and just plug. That's what it's here for, man. Yeah. That's what it's yeah. here. Yeah. Look look All forward right. to the next podcast you guys do, actually. Look forward to hearing the next one. Appreciate it. Definitely uh, yes, sir. check up on the other ones, too, that you haven't listened to, and let us know your feedback. Yeah, I think it was like episode three is like one of the only ones I haven't listened to. Okay, cool. Cool. Appreciate it. That's Dixon's. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. What was I think it was the one right after that. My bad. It was four. The uh, one right after Dixon's. That was the one I, I didn't get to hear. 
Six. I, I started listening to it uh, while I was on a road trip, and I just didn't get to finish. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, I'll let the I'll let the recording stop here. All right, yeah, we'll stop it. Well, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> you better keep that in there. I did. All right, good.